How is it going everyone? I see a lot of familiar names here. Hi Travis, hi Brent, Mark, hi Mark. Good to see all of you here. Everybody, welcome to our tap room that is opened every Thursday. It's the only tap room where you are welcome to throw the peanuts on the floor. And today our topic is uh, Virtual Tape Library Vitalize Your Backup Infrastructure. And before we will start, I'd like to make a quick check of the system to make sure that everything runs properly and smoothly. So please, drop me a quick message in the GoToMeeting chat box in the video, if the video and audio are actually okay. So I'm waiting. Okay. Thank you, Don, for the feedback. Thank you, Douglas. Oh, hi, Douglas, by the way. Okay, I'm getting another feedback, so I am assume that everything works good. Okay, um, besides uh, the good old friends here in the room, I see a lot of new names. So I'd like to remind everyone that this is a this is tap room, and it's initiated by Starwind and occurs every Thursday. And before we will start. I want to assure everyone that the happening is recorded and the record will be uploaded to our website soon after we will get done today. So probably tomorrow the video will be available for public review. Also if you have any questions please type them all in into the GoToWebinar chat box and I will try to answer them as soon as it will actually be possible. Moreover, if there will be a great question that may result in a brilliant, fantastic, magnificent and fascinating discussion, I will gladly unmute the person who asked it and we will discuss the question live. And just a quick introduction for the new guys here of myself. Uh, my name is Anatoly, you guys can call me obviously Tony. I've been in IT for seven years and six of them I have dedicated to Starwind Software Incorporated. Uh, right now I'm leading the support department worldwide in this company. I prefer drinking scotch or Cointreau, but it looks like I got, got a little cold today, so I have a tea with cinnamon and Beherovka in my cup right now. Okay, looks like we're all set here. So let's rock, bottoms up gentlemen. Let's make a quick overview of the agenda for today's session. For operative, we will have a quick reminder, let's call it in that way, of the physical tape and tape infrastructure history. We will talk about how exactly people are using it and then after as a first round of drink we will talk about will the feed uh, will the backup fit the backup window or not <coughs> uh, basically we will review some traditional uh, problems of the physical tapes as a bitter we will talk about how exactly starwind helps to avoid the traditional problems of the physical backups and uh, at the end of the presentation part we will talk about uh, the disk to disk to tape strategy uh, and that was kind of spoiler uh, nevertheless uh, and at the killing shot of today's drink we will see Starwind in action and uh, obviously traditionally there will be a question and answer session at the after party of today's tap room. Okay so a long long time ago in the company far far away there was a guy who lived happily and he get hurt uh, until the uh, he got hired as a system administrator into the office. He had a lot of tasks and one of them was creation and managing of the backups infrastructure of the whole entire company. So uh, he took a look into the 
big black law book of the country where he lived in and he saw that he actually forced to put the backups on the tapes well moreover the tapes have actually chip capacity he thought and well they are not quite bad which means that they are quite good and that should do the job for him so he get to the dark dark forest and happily get the type tape li physical tape library to his system he configured to run every backup to uh, to your site on that tape system so all the application servers were uh, attached to that tape and all the uh, processes of taking snapshots were running through only one backup server and everything was on that tape but and here is the part where the fairy tale actually becomes a horror story action because uh, and one shiny day he mentioned that he had a lot of hypervisors in his system and that obviously assumes a lot of virtual machines in the infrastructure but he cannot get the, he cannot back up the virtual machines directly to the tapes because the tape library has some kind of physical limitation and that is actually the wire so he cannot push that wire through all the abstractions layer directly into the virtual machine which was bad for him because he was forced to take the backup on the storage level which is really resource consuming which is more which is really uh, time killing and that is not really convenient when only one virtual machine failed and you need to recover it because if you take in the snapshots on the storage level all the virtual machines that will be uh, that are on one storage will be recovered from that snapshot from that single snapshot so if one of the machine lost one day of operation and you need to recover that ba that basically mean that all the virtual machines will lose that one day of operations which is bad that makes our guy sad also he said uh, hey uh, can I actually back up something use those tapes to back up something that uh, is not that is really far far away and no set tapes because the tape library has the same physical limitation the wire and the wire cannot go for a long long time because it it is really specific wire proprietary wire the guy was really 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 sad again also he mentioned that the backups initially uh, it, it took about four hours let's say to uh, back up all the infrastructure but the company growth the guy grow and the company growth and in a few years there were so much virtual machines and so a lot of users data that the backup took on uh, took about nine hours while the backup window that that company could afford was only eight hours what should I do ask the guy and well first of all he decided just to live with that but once the backup window uh, the backup went beside the backup window all the operations during that lap overlap oh was actually really slow and everything was lagging and nobody liked it and nobody wanted it and everybody hated it so there were a lot of angry guys and our guy, our hero don't don't like to be the bad guy in the story 
and well uh, guys i'm not the best fairy tale uh, storyteller actually uh, and you all probably should be feel sorry about my kids that i didn't have at the moment because uh, of that so uh let's switch this format for, uh, from the fairy tale to our usual tap room conversations so uh what i want to tell you right now about the backup window in 24 7 production well you know if you need to run backup you obviously need to consider that the system gonna lag during that backup if you are uh, if you don't have the hardware store that will be power, uh, powerful enough to feed that to feed that requirement and usually nobody had that even the you know fat cats uh, of the da data centers so uh, how exactly is that gonna uh, w what exactly is gonna result in well in the worst case scenario uh, the system administrator will be fired because just imagine the whole company don't ha cannot operate during the business hours that sucks right and that is exactly oh, what, what actually that overlap of the backup with the uh, backup process with the business process can call, result in uh, well the good part here is that usually people don't have 24/7 uh, production and they have well at least eight hours let's imagine that the company has two shifts so eight hours for backup and theoretically that should be enough uh you know theoretically but the trick here is that tapes are actually not the fastest thing on this planet and they are kind of really slow well comparing to usual hard drives you know uh and that is actually not the best idea to rely on the tapes uh, speed you know so um, what exactly gonna happen if the data will grow one day the situations that you actually see on your slide right now on your screens right now there will be few VMs that should choose to back up or to run production um, if that assumes some kind of data centers in the i don't know uh, in the city that is known as the uh, records man of uh, number of power outages in the months uh, then now the system administrator will obviously not feel really comfortable about live, f managing this infrastructure so what exactly can be done here? Virtualize responsibly. Uh, it is possible to uh, create the virtual tape library that will actually reside on the that going to be let's say disk image, virtual disk uh, that gonna uh, reside on the usual hard drives, on the chip setas chips well not, not too expensive SAS or maybe even on a flash I mean I don't know who exactly gonna keep the backups on the flash uh, but there is always a guy right uh, so uh, there will no longer be the problems with the performance because uh, uh, you will get flexibility in the performance management I mean Today you want to get 1,000 tie-ups, please grab SAS, 10k SAS and rate 10. Uh, tomorrow you want to have 100,000 tie-ups, okay, here is where the flash gonna come into play and you're always welcome to run the VTL on top of that. Also, uh, since you're always, uh, since you can maze your VTL well, and right now I'm talking about the Starwind solution. Uh, if you, since you can maze your VTL disks across different devices, let's say the first part is going to be on a SATAS, the second going to be on a SAS, the third one going to be on something else. Uh, so uh, that gives uh, that that means that you always can grab another JBot 
or some other storage, some other DAS uh, connected to the server and that will result in the increased capacity of the VTL infrastructure. So there is no capacity limitation for the Starwind product actually, which is really good. Also, um, multiple backup jobs can be done simultaneously. Once again, Starwind VTL is flexible, so you can create few VTL emulations and run few backups, <coughs> which should do the perform the fitting backup window job as well. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of things that uh, VTL users will benefit from, and some of them all, some of the people are already benefiting from it. Uh, but those that you see on your screens are the major ones. But that's not all. The side effect. Uh, as you remember, at the beginning of the story, I mentioned that the system administrator is actually forced to run everything, uh, to put everything on the physical tape. Um, VTL is good with that. Why? Because as you can see on your diagram, after the data was backed up on the VTL and the production was not affected, you can start like copying let's say the backups from the VTL to the physical tape on the background and that process will not affect the production system. So in this case VTL can be used as some kind of buffer, speed buffer between the virtualized infrastructure, uh, I mean whole entire infrastructure and the physical tape. So it will accelerate the whole process, which is good. And that called is disk to disk to tape strategy. And as far as I read from a report of one company, don't remember which one exactly, so I won't lie. Uh, the major part of the companies are actually running the D. DDT, D to D to T strategy. Okay, so uh, we're gonna run the Starwind live demonstration within a couple of uh, minutes, I guess. So uh, if you guys have any questions, it's actually a good time to ask them if, before we will proceed with the live demo. I'm giving you about a minute to ask your questions if you have some. If not, we will proceed. And meanwhile, well, I could sing a song, but I don't want to make harm. <laughs> well, looks like the Looks like my presentation is awesome and nobody has any questions. Okay, that works for me. Okay, so uh, as I promised, we're gonna see Starwind in action. Grab your beer and get prepared. Uh, what I want to show you is the Starwind console that, well, actually it's running in our environment. And what I will show you how it is actually easy to configure everything in the with Starwind. So here is the is our server and this is Veeam. Uh, by the way, I have actually used uh, Starwind to install the to emulate the Veeam installator installation, and I installed it on our servers. Well, that was the end of the story with Veeam because I, <laughs> I didn't get any further. So maybe we'll see how it goes right now. So, first of all, 
what Tarwin can do for the tape-based infrastructure. Two options here, gentlemen, after I will get the license configured. Sorry for that. So, uh, boom. Download. Really? That's weird. Okay, give me guys a second. So I'm gonna install it here. really weird okay perfect so right now it should allow me to create anything I want really okay never mind I just use the other server it is actually licensed to create the tapes HVN. There's a little math over there that I haven't cleaned up yet. Not this one. This one. Tape device. So, uh, what exactly Starwin can do? First of all, it allows exporting of the physical tapes. Well, if we, if I would have at least one, I would finish up this wizard. Also, the f uh, Starwind allows sharing the uh, physical tapes or autoloader. And this, my friends, those two options are actually eliminating the inability of the tapes to be passed through into the virtual machine. Which is great, isn't it? But today we're talking about the virtual tape, so let's stick with that option and click next. On this step you need to specify, you must specify, uh, the location where the uh, Starwind VTL emulation is going to be stored. And you should choose if you are creating the new file or use an existing one. In our case that's going to be existing one. Also, Starwind allows emulation of two different tape loaders. So it's going to be HP and Eric Scalar. Well, I'm a, if I would choose between those two, I would stick with the HP. Just because of the brand awareness, nothing more. And let's call it somehow love. Everybody needs some love. Great, and in a few minutes we're gonna see this big guy here. Which is cool. So, what is left to be done here is to connect to it. SCSI initiator. Uh, let's quick ref click ref refresh in the SCSI initiator and let's search for some love good we've got the love now let's verify that uh, the tape is actually here somewhere tape drives hp cool isn't it Okay, so what, uh, by the way, also I have the failover cluster created somewhere, but hey, uh, let's just assume that I want to back up the local machine. And it's the first time when I actually see the, when I'm working with the Vim backup. Credentials, password, configuration. Well, okay, let's just stick with the fact that it's here and it's ready to uh, to be to process all the backups to run everything. Well, sorry, Vim guys, I didn't have actually enough of time to double check how exactly 
those things should be configured. But uh, I want to say a few good words about the Vim uh, product, guys. So uh, the product is actually pretty awesome. Uh, the backup, uh, the Vim backup and replication allows a lot of things. Uh, and it's really useful for managing uh, of the backup infrastructure. It allows uh, creating the DR uh, copy and etc. Also, uh, there is a monitor client and one server. And so, you know, at the end of the day, uh, Vim software is not the backup and replication software, but also it allows managing of your uh, entire infrastructure, which is cool as well, because there are a lot of situations when people are say, well, you know, uh, I'm doing the pre-sales here in Starwind, and there are a lot of situations where people are asking, like, okay, but uh, what hardware should I pick for Starwind? And I was, and I was saying the same thing to everybody. People, uh, Starwind will live on any hardware. The question is, what workload do you expect? And the, you know, a lot of people just don't know what exactly workloads that they're gonna meet. And I'm saying, and usually that the part when I recommend them to get the Veeam and to at least to monitor what they already have to see what workloads they have right now. <laughs> and you know, actually, the best answer about the expected future workload was. It's going to be average, you know, <laughs> real average. <laughs> well, <laughs> nevertheless. So, okay, it looks like the uh, demo part is done at the moment. So let's go to the questions and answers. Okay, gentlemen, looking forward to get the questions from you. And we already have one from Kate. If we're pushing backups to the cloud, how could we use Starwind? Is there any benefits? Uh, let me think about it. Yeah, uh, if you are pushing everything from the, you know, just idea from the top of my head, if that will not fit you, probably I will just unmute you. So uh, if you are pushing everything to the cloud, that basically means that uh you can have the dr uh, the internet as a bottleneck and that may cause the system to you know to start start pretending that it's a uh, actually slow poc uh, nobody so basically th that got to be a speed limit there uh so you can put all the backups on your vtl thing uh, and then after uh, backup everything from the VTL to the cloud in the background. Well, that's approximate. Actually, it's approximately to the thing shown here. But let's imagine that after the VTL, VTL there is an internet, and that thing is actually slow. Well, I hope that does the job. I hope that answers the question. Let me know if it is not so. And also, actually, that was the only question that we've got at the moment. So I'm waiting for another minute before I will say thank you to everybody. And while we're waiting, you can also share what's your, f if there are actually any topic that you would like to see on our tap room. I would appreciate it as well. And also while we are waiting, I'd like to give you a hint. Change uh, the password on your computer to incorrect. So whenever you will forget what is the what is the what is your password, the computer will say it, your password is incorrect. Yeah, I know that's a kind of old joke, but that's one of my favorite one jokes, favorite ones. 
and another uh, again old joke uh, is uh, do you know where the best place to uh, to hide something it's on the second page of the Google search <laughs> okay uh, looks like we got a question from Don do you emulate other type of tapes and or changers nah Sorry, but no, uh, that, those are like actually the only two for the moment. Uh, well, that can be enough, uh, and to be honest, uh, I'm not sure why exactly somebody needs some, something additionally, but we are actually opened, um, you know, uh, by the way, if you have something that you would like to see in the Tavern functionality, uh, we are all, always welcome to receive the feature requests from you, so just like email to support, put the feature request into the subject and we'll see it uh so don't why don't you just do that and if, if there are any specific uh physical hardware that you, you want to see starrent emulates just drop the message okay don thank you as well well looks like we're out of the questions so thank you rock stars i really appreciate that i saw uh, all of you here don thank you for a good question uh, if you need anything like just drop me a quick email it's on the bottom my email uh, is on the bottom of your of this slide right now uh, if you want something uh, from Starwind, just go to the website and search there. Usually people are searching for the technical documentation and we've got the kind of good resource library. Well, I enjoy it. Uh, if you want to uh, get the latest Starwind build, you should go to the customers page, uh, which contain the download link, the release notes and you know other information. If you want to give us your money, just email to sales, we will gladly receive your email, you know. <laughs> and if you want to talk about the marketing and, or something like, drop email to info at starwind.com. Okay, guys, thank you. That was really good tap room today. I'm not too wasted at the moment, which is good. Uh, so, take care, everyone, and have a great weekend. Bye-bye.